When we think about uh, poverty in the developing world, we often think about images such as this. But uh, this is not the whole story. And there's a new world out there. And that new world, there are 4.5 billion cell phones in the world. And most of them are in the developing world. And 3 billion of those are 2G phones that are capable basically only of voice calls and SMS text messaging. Now what will happen if we can take this text messaging capability and do more than just pass messages between people? What happens if we can take this and push the internet all the way down to three billion people that are no longer, that are not yet part of the information economy? What happens then? Well, take for example, this girl that says, sells necklace to tourists. A system could tell her where the tourists are congregating today so she can go there and sell more. Or this guy, a fisherman, he can get a wind and current update every day telling him where he's mo li more likely to find fish. Or this woman who has to wait for the trains because the trains never run on time and she can take those two hours and do something more productive with her time. Another part of this equation is that in every major city in the developing world, somebody is teaching computer programming. So what happens if we put these two together? Can we create a platform? Can we create a situation where local people can find local solutions to local problems because they know what ails them and they know what the solutions are? Well, unfortunately, this isn't very realistic right now. And the reason for that is that putting up an SMS-based application is really difficult. First of all, you have to have computers, and you have to connect them to the internet, and you have to get uh, electricity. Next, you have to talk to the cell phone companies. And the cell phone companies require agreements, and they require fees, and this is a long and hard and complicated process. And then on top of that, you need to know a whole host of technologies, all of which are required to set up such an application. But what if we could do without all these? What if we could take internet cafes that are available basically everywhere and make them a sufficient infrastructure? If you only had a browser, you could sell an SMS application. To understand how we can do that, we need to go back a little bit to what happened in the US. In the early 90s, we all had 2G phones, but we didn't have many data applications over them. Why? Because it was as complicated to create those applications as it is now in the developing world. And then came 3G. And for a long time, nobody understood why we need 3G. We didn't have anything interesting going on. And then another piece of the puzzle came, and that's cloud computing. And cloud computing enabled us to create very easily applications that can be deployed within over a weekend nationally. And then everything flourished. So what we're suggesting is connect the old and the new. Take the old 2G phones and connect them to cloud computing. What we're proposing is an application platform for creation of SMS programs. This will allow anybody with access to a web browser or even over an SMS phone to create a useful application, to get customers that need that data, and to create revenue for himself by using that data. An important thing to remember is that what we're proposing is not a charity. It is a working business. Everybody gets a benefit. The fisherman may pay a cent or two for the SMS, but he'll catch 10 cents worth of fish because he's in the right place. So that's, worth, that, that's worthwhile for him. And the guy writing the application, well, he gets paid because he wrote the application. And the cell phone companies get paid because there's more SMS. And the company running the platform, well, they take a slight commission over each transaction. So what we're setting up here is not a charitable organization. This is a viable business that will affect economic development all over the world. And it will allow three billion people to become part of the information economy. And I think that when we do that, we'll just have to stand back in awe of their creativity and how quickly they extricate themselves from poverty. Thank you.